Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our program part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, a joint venture of PATH Presenter and the Digital, Ana Digital Pathology Association. Our case today comes from the realm of GYN pathology um, and uh, involves a woman who has uh, been having some vaginal itching um, and also is reportedly uh, has a history of oral lichen planus. Um, she does not have other uh, skin lesions. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the question is raised as to whether or not her vaginal itching is related to the oral uh, disorder. So um, I think it's very helpful to think clinically about the sort of things that can ca cause uh, uh, mucosal irritation, painful or itchy lesions. Um, and uh, certainly chief among these would be contact mucositis. Um, and this uh, includes a very long list of uh, potential irritants that can cause a contact type of dermatitis or mucositis, uh, ranging everything from uh, laundry detergent to uh, clothing uh, to uh, creams and uh, Pessieres and other sorts of uh, uh, items that may come in contact with these delicate areas. Uh, it's also of note to uh, remember that drug reactions that can occur and involve this area, uh, though not commonly. Uh, several primary skin disorders, uh, lichen sclerosis, lichen planus, uh, psoriasis, and eczematous dermatitis can all affect uh, these areas as well. And then uh, finally, infections and neoplasms need to, to round out our list. Uh, certainly. Uh, you don't want to miss uh, any of these uh, treatable infectious, infectious lesions, um, and you do not want to miss a neoplasm in this setting. So those are kind of the, the laundry list of things to consider uh, from allergic uh, phenomenon to uh, primary skin diseases and so forth. So let's take a look at uh, this patient's uh, lesion. Here's a, a small fragment of uh, vaginal mucosa. Uh, and as you see, we coming in on uh, high magnification. The, the tissue is not optimally oriented, but we see that there's a little bit of uh, uh, hyperkeratosis and parakeratosis, along with this uh, submucosal dense uh, inflammatory infiltrate. We don't see the characteristic uh, jagged uh, basal um, uh, epi epithelial uh, submucosal uh, boundary that you would usually see in lichen planus in the skin, uh, but this is not uh, optimally oriented, as I mentioned. Uh, as well, I think you can begin to recognize a, a few uh, dyskeratotic or abnormal cells uh, here in this mixture. And notice as we come in onto higher magnification that we have a significant population of uh, lymphocytes up in the epithelium. Uh, almost forming little uh, micro clusters or micro abscesses. Uh, we have here a dyskeratotic cell uh, in the near superficial areas. And then we have several here that you can see uh, a little closer to the basement membrane, uh, so-called civat bodies. Uh, but look here also what we have associated here, an eosinophil there, an eosinophil there. Um, and as we look a little further in the uh, uh, submucosal infiltrate, I think we can also identify that there are a few rare eosinophils here as well. Um, the uh, epithelial and submucosal boundary is a little bit smudged and, and uh, uh, irregular uh, or ill-defined. Um, and we have this uh, very inflamed uh, lymphocytic infiltrate um, that is also present here. Uh, along with uh, maybe a few uh, histiocytes and uh, even a rare plasma cell or two in this inflammatory infiltrate. So uh, this pattern, uh, here's another eosinophil here. Um, and I think uh, you can see again, a few plasmacytoid lymphocytes or plasmacytoid cells here. So this uh, uh, certainly fits into the category of a lichenoid inflammatory reaction. Uh, there's abundant exocytosis of uh, lymphocytes, and we have the uh, dyskeratotic cells uh, that uh, you've seen here. 
uh, along with some hyperkeratosis and a little bit of granulation, granulosis here, um, maybe with a few interruptions in that process as well, um, all along here. And uh, here we can see more of these uh, savat bodies or dyskeratotic cells uh, up in the epidermis. So uh, I think uh, this certainly looks like a lichenoid uh, pattern. The question, uh, particularly given her history of oral lichen planus, is whether or not this is just um, the less frequently seen uh, vulvovaginal uh, lichen planus, or uh, whether or not this could be a lichenoid drug eruption. Um, so in favor of lichen planus, of course, is the, here, the history of oral lesions. Um, also, these lesions are very uh, um, easily steroid responsive, responsive, but I think to fully resolve, resolve upon this diagnosis, you have to exclude several of the lookalikes, including the drug eruption issue. Um, I was not able to pull from her medical records the uh, list of uh, current agents, uh, but she, uh, was, she did have a rather long medication list uh, that included a variety of uh, antihypertensives, as well as uh, other uh, ingestants that could be uh, related to uh, this uh, process. So uh, you'd like to make sure that there's a, at least some history of uh, ingestants that could be uh, allergens. Um, and uh, ideally, you'd like to demonstrate that the lesion responds to a change or a, a removal of that medication. From a histologic standpoint, there are a few things that you can think about that may help you. Uh, and among these are the presence of eosinophils, which uh, we certainly have in our lesion, uh, focal perikeratosis, which we did not identify, plasma cells, maybe, um, and the exocytosis well up into the epithelium, high up into the epithelium. So uh, this is uh, the thing uh, that we have at least two of these uh, important factors to sort of favor the drug eruption, and at least a medication list that could include uh, one or more of these uh, higher risk uh, items. Uh, notice uh, that some of the newer agents that patients uh, may be on in the settings of various neoplasms, these checkpoint inhibitors, uh, immunomodulators, and so forth, can be a cause for a lichenoid uh, drug eruption. So uh, our, uh, I'd like to just maybe take a second and compare uh, what the cutaneous findings of lichen planus will look like uh, to help you uh, sort of fix this uh, pattern in your, in your brain. Uh, here you see a very nice uh, low power image uh, with this band-like uh, inflammatory infiltrate, uh, a little bit of hyperkeratosis and some wedging of the uh, granulo granulosis. Uh, and then notice this uh, very sort of sawtooth-like pattern of the uh, reedy ridges. Um, as we uh, go into a higher magnification, uh, I think you can see that there is uh, some exocytosis into the uh, epithelium, but not to the degree we had there in the uh, uh, vaginal mucosa. Uh, you can find uh, perhaps a few uh, dyskeratotic or uh, dying cells um, here, but this uh, inflammatory infiltrate is uh, almost purely lymphocytic, and we're not seeing any uh, eosinophils involved here. We do have edema in the uh, stratum corneum, uh, as we've uh, noted before um, uh, in the uh, va vaginal uh, sample that we just looked at. Um, so uh, if you'd like to compare, you can see some uh, sort of uh, rimming or satelliting along the uh, dermal epidermal junction in these lesions uh, as well. I'm not I'm not a dermatopathologist, but uh, it certainly comes across our desk often enough that you need to be familiar with this lichenoid pattern of inflammation. And I think this is a nice example of lichen planus uh, on the skin uh, for comparison. So uh, our final sign out diagnosis today is lichen planus like vaginitis uh, with uh, a strong favor for a lichenoid drug reaction uh, pending uh, additional clinical correlation. Uh, and it would be nice perhaps even to compare with her oral lesion, which was not in our files. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, little foray into uh, uh, cutaneous inflammatory pathology uh, relating to the skin. If you like the program, please subscribe so you'll catch future releases from our channel. 
And as always, we welcome uh, feedback uh, uh, directly or in the form of comments uh, in the area below. Uh, we do hope you'll subscribe and uh, maybe share your comments, uh, share the video with uh, colleagues uh, that may be dealing with some of these issues and training as well. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.